How are you so conservative that all of a sudden you'll vote for anyone but Trump? Let's let's go down the list. What happened to the pro-life principles? All of a sudden, because he said something that was caught in a tape that was bad, mind you, you are now going to vote for the party who supports taxpayer-funded abortion on demand up until birth, even for transgenders, period. Question of the day, if you didn't vote, for people out there who didn't vote for Trump in 2016, who identify sort of as Republicans, conservatives, are you more or less likely to vote for him in 2020? It's not a question for Democrats because I know you're not going to vote for him anyway. And uh, if you did vote for him, how would you say Trump has done in meeting your expectations? Give me a grade, I'm curious, because I want to talk about this today. It's something that really does bother. It bothers Mm -hmm. me quite a bit. Uh, Going into 2020, we have this group of people, the the never Trumpers, who are still around, uh, I guess, and they've ratcheted things up to a level that is uh, mind-numbing and incredibly inconsistent. What bothers me most about this is the virtue signaling while they completely abandon any and all principles while trying to stand on the soapbox of, I'm making this principled decision. No, you're not, professional asker of questions three, Rick Wilson. Let's go to the tale of tapes. (laughs) An an administration defined by ignorance of the world. And so that's partly him playing to their base and playing to their audience. Uh, Is he? The the, the credulous boomer rude demo that backs Donald Trump. The, The screamers and the crazy people on the on the alt right, as they call it, um, you know, who 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 love Donald Trump, who who have plenty of Hitler iconography in their Twitter uh, icons and they things. They sure do. I can back that Donald up. Donald Trump is the greatest thing. What? Oh, it's it's something. But the fact of the matter is, most of them are childless single men who masturbate to anime. First of all, who, who, that last guy looked like a robot at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. You should be. Is there yeah, Rick, yes, Wilson? Rick Wilson, you say it's your birthday. <laughs> Remember that Chuck E. Cheese? Yes. Now exactly. it's nothing but a screen at Chuck E. Yeah. Cheese. Well, they don't have the robots anymore. Need animatronics. Oh, terrifying. So all of these people, including love to work in Modern Family, they um, <laughs> claim to be Republicans of some sort. And we also have another uh, a tweet. I just had to include it from a. Uh, Billy Crystal, Bill oh. Crystal, with a K. Not presumably forever, not perhaps for a day after November 3rd, 2020, not on every issue or in every way until then, but for the time being, one has to say, we're all Democrats. Now, if one's a dick, <laughs> <laughs> Fair and point. this is, he so, is actually, one has right. to say, okay, you can be the one, all right? I don't yeah. understand what this, we all have to say, why? I don't understand this at all. And the reason they won't, they claim they won't vote for Trump is because of these presumed consistent conservative principles. And they're so principled as conservatives, the never Trumpers, that they will abandon all of said conservative principles overnight. <laughs> right. Because Donald Trump is mean. <laughs> He, he tweets the mean thing, so I'm going to go vote for open borders and abortion. Yeah, I'm conservative. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> uh, yeah, I came it was someone named nobody. Paco Jimenez. I knew in my childhood. He's going to give you the room to <laughs> work Anna Navarro, it. it was close enough. And here's one thing I think is important, because people will point this out. Yep, oh, I was not a, a Trump fan in the primaries, okay? No. Uh, right, I yeah. know that a lot of people out there were, and I think there was an appropriate time for people to be reasonable, uh, reasonably skeptical. Yeah. Because during the primaries, especially before 20, or even before the general election with him and Hillary Clinton. He was an unknown entity at that point. He had been a Democrat for a very long time as well. He had given to both parties. We really didn't know. And that was part of his appeal, was the unknown, that he was an outsider. I understand it, okay? And I was wrong in the sense that, well, I wasn't wrong. I was right to be skeptical then, but I was proven wrong in the Mm -hmm. sense that my skepticism, uh, skepticism was unwarranted. Then I was sort of optimistic, hopefully optimistic, and I will say this, uh, pleasantly surprised at this point. But in 2020, is he still an unknown? This is the thing yeah. that doesn't make any sense right now. I can understand never Trumpers before 2016, right. but now as we go into 2020, anyone out there who feels this way, please send me your justification. How are you so conservative that all of a sudden you'll vote for anyone but Trump? Let's let's go down the list, all right, of your, your principles. Uh, the right to life, your pro-life. Uh, that's a big one. Okay. What happened to the pro-life principles? Did those get completely thrown out the window the second that Donald Trump mentioned grabbing people by the undercarriage? Is that what happened? So all of a sudden, because he said something that was caught in a tape that was bad, mind you, you are now going to vote for the party who supports taxpayer-funded abortion on demand up until birth, even for transgenders, period, no exception, tale of the tape. New York Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo for passing a historic bill legalizing abortion up until birth. This is infanticide that we're talking about. Republican Ben Sass blasts Governor Ralph Northam of Virginia for supporting a bill in his state that would have allowed abortion up until and during birth. The infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant it's would hard be for me to even watch this uh, clip. Yeah. This is so horrible. The infant would be resuscitated if, and the if more that's context what the, you had, the worse uh, mother it is. and the yeah. family yeah. desired. You can't explain it discussion away. would ensue no. between the physicians and the mother. Just because a woman, or let's also not forget someone in the trans community, oh boy. a trans female, <laughs> 
Nice. Uh, is poor doesn't mean they shouldn't have the right to exercise that right to choose. Uh, it's not because they're poor. It's mainly the cock and balls. That is the uh, yes, reason yes, they yes. can't exercise the, mm, the right to choose. Sure. I'd like to have an abortion. What? Behind the cock and balls? Is that <laughs> what we're talking about? This is really important. Awesome. The lesser of two evils. I hear Bill Crystal and Rick Wilson and all yeah. these never Trump. And by the way, you're more than welcome to come on this show. I don't hate you guys. I just think you are so woefully wrong. The lesser of two yeah. evils would be that party. Find me a single person, say for Tulsi Gabbard, who has put any restrictions on abortion whatsoever. Let's compare that as a lesser of two evil, uh, evils to Donald Trump, who has governed as arguably the most pro-life president ever. Yeah. Immediately when he became president, he reversed course on the Mexico City policy, was reverse, reverse, reverse. It basically means that we're not providing abortions uh, or sending funding to abortions overseas. Yep. Then he uh, enabled states to cut off federal funding to Planned Parenthood and other abortion groups while allowing them to uh, provide some of these funds to other groups that help with right. uh, crisis pregnancy mm -hmm. that don't provide abortions. Right. He also cut funding for the uh, UN Population Fund, which Good. supports abortion, forced sterilization in China. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he also rolled back the Obamacare, Obamacare birth control mandate that would force employers to have to pay for what they believe to be abortion. Abortificance. Is it abortificance or abortificence? Like maleficence. I don't care. The point Either is, way. he couldn't be more pro-life as far as how he has governed, not to mention the Supreme Court. And you talk about lesser of two evils. President Trump's uh, Department of Health, uh, Health and Human Services uh, defined life as beginning at conception, which really isn't all that radical considering that's every science textbook ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. It's radical, though. And he was the first Science. president ever to go to the March for Life. And some people... Which was huge. Well, some people say that was a political move. Here's the thing. I understand. Let's say that all of this, all care. of these steps were just political moves. They were calculated. Yeah. Who cares? If your reason for not supporting Donald Trump in 2020 is your principles, you should still be happy with the outcome at this point. Let's go to the Second Amendment. You claim that this matters, the lesser of two evils. Well, what happened to your pro-Second Amendment principles? We won't right. even get into the First Amendment today because we know it's a lost cause for the Democratic Party. But the Second <laughs> Amendment, let's just go down the list to number two. Did those get thrown out of the window? Because now you can vote for a party who they want to ban all semi-automatic, not automatic, semi-automatic, which would include nearly all handguns yes. and firearms. Yeah. They want to create a national registry. And the justice, justices, by the way, the left's justices have actually argued that private citizens have no right Whoa. to owning firearms whatsoever. Wow. This is the lesser of two evils. So we should take weapons of war. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. No, you're not. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. I think there would be a, a visit by law enforcement to recover that firearm <laughs> and to make sure that it is purchased, bought back, so that it cannot be potentially used against somebody else. The only way Beto O'Rourke is wielding an AK-47 is if an Acme white flag going pow comes out. <laughs> exactly. Never Trumpers, it's the lesser of two evils. On the Second Amendment, under President Trump, we've seen rollback of Obama air regulations, right? They took, yeah. a lot of people don't know this, took gun rights away from seniors merely because they needed help managing money. <laughs> Wow. And so they were that's, deemed to be so mentally terrible. defective, uh, basically. <laughs> and uh, also, of course, President Trump. He hasn't done a lot for the Second Amendment. But here's the thing. Republicans don't need to do that much. They just need to not budge as it relates yes. to us maintaining yeah. our mm -hmm. Second just Amendment rights. It. So no change after, of course, the assault weapons ban uh, was basically rolled back and it doesn't exist anymore is good. That's a good thing. Yeah. We don't want change all the time. So President Trump not changing a whole lot and uh, having simultaneously promised to veto any Democrats' ridiculous uh, attempts at gun legislation, I think it's a pretty good thing. And yeah. again, if you are saying, I will vote for anyone not named Donald Trump, what are the Democrats offering? Never Trumpers, what are they offering? What's that sensible middle ground? Is it domestic abusers can't get, no, we already have that. Is it uh, having to pass a background check? No, we already have that. It's banning all semi-automatic weapons and firearms that have magazine capacities, or at least banning the magazines that are over 10 rounds like we have in California and then forcing people to have to register for ammo. Is that what you're talking about? That's the middle ground from the left. So I would love to know, Anna Navarro and Rick Wilson and Billy Crystal, what do the Democrats offer you that you see as the lesser of evil uh, in comparison to Trump's evil. Let's go to the economy, right? Because I wanted to start off with pro-life. Let's start with Second Amendment, kind of moral issues. Yeah. Let's go to let's go to something results-oriented. What? But on the principle, what about supporting a free market economy, free enterprise? That's one of the most. Yeah. That's the basic tenet of conservatism. Toss it. You people are saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're saying. That's what they're, yeah. what, exactly. You, you yeah. just vote for the Democrat because they're not Trump. Okay, so I, I understand this. So the only <laughs> the only logical alternative to President Donald Trump in the case of the economy is self-avowed socialists? Your alternative never Trumpers is someone like Bernie right now who thinks that a 90% top tax rate isn't too high, lest you think I make this up. 
radical socialist Dwight D. Eisenhower was president, I think the highest marginal tax rate was something like 90 It was 90 When you think about 90%, you don't think that's obviously too high? No. <laughs> no. It's like he's trying to help no. him. Yes, like he he's is. trying yeah. to give him something. Yeah, come on. I don't even, like, on. I can't even say, that's not even like a softball for Bernie. Yeah, that's yeah. just the interview. I'm like, oh, oh, let me say, and placing the ball on the yeah. tee. And Bernie is just like, ah! He's just hitting himself on the <laughs> of a cricket bat. Am I winning? <laughs> <laughs> On the flip side, if we're talking about the lesser oh, of two man. evils, you have President Donald Trump, whose tax cuts have reduced the tax bill for uh, those earning a median income uh, here in the United States, right around the average, about 60%. Yeah. Mm. That's, that sounds substantial. That's, yeah. And while yeah. we're talking about terrible. results, not to sound like a broken record, we have record low unemployment, we have record low layoffs, we have more job participation than oh. we've ever had. Of course, we see huge increases in household income, wage growth, that's an argument that's gone away, record-breaking stock market. And I do, I would love to be a Democrat in 2020. I want to see their no. sell when they try to tell the American public that they've been screwed by a president who has created record low unemployment, <laughs> record high wage growth, stock yeah. market yeah. values, and as they pick, as they stop to fill their tank with, top it off with some gas on the way to the polls that evening, it's a buck 45. It's hard to sell that message that you need change well, when that's going that's on. That's why the Democrats have to, now they're not LBJ, they're not JFK, they're not the party of the working class families, they have to go to identity politics. And that's why it's now the party of social justice warriors because they can't argue on the economy. That's average crazy. Americans, yeah. including average black Americans, minorities, period, across the board, all of them are doing better now. Anyone want to argue that people are doing, they're, they're worse off than seven years ago under mm -hmm. President Obama? Leave your comments. I'd love to see you heckled <laughs> out of the comments. <laughs> Let's go to immigration. <laughs> Never Trumpers, your principles, immigration. So Demi let's be really clear. Democrats not only want a socialist health care system, and I mean that, a socialized health care system. I come from one. I'm not using it as a racist dog whistle. I come from a place where I have buried relatives who could not get the kind of care that they would get here in the United States. It's a place called Canada. Yeah. Kind of little country to the north of us. Look it up. <laughs> America's hat. They not, they not only want to have a socialized health care system, which would put people in shallow graves, mm -hmm. they want to extend that socialized health care to all citizens or non-citizens. Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. I like the last view. Cricket bat! <laughs> <laughs> Bernie is just like, oh, yeah, everybody no. got their Everybody's hands got, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Me too. Okay. Heroes. <laughs> The one or two, they were like, Jeez. all right, I hope someone's watching this and changing my website. Really? <laughs> yeah. Real fast. Quick, quick, get really on, get on the, the right side. Otherwise, Taylor Swift's going to start a petition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sa by Very the way, effective. Senator Sanders even advocates completely pausing all deportations, even for, and this is important, wait for it, convicted violent criminals. Ooh. So we're going to end the ICE raids, which are terrorizing communities all across this country. Enforcing the law. We are going to impose a moratorium on deportations. Ah, okay. Mm. So we're all Democrats? <laughs> really? Nope. One must say that, Bill Crystal. <laughs> we're all Democrats. Let's pause violent criminals being deported. Let's give them all free health care because that's a that's a less radical idea than building a wall on the border. Uh, right. <laughs> And this is something, this is the bait and switch that you see from Democrats, right? You see this yeah. a lot. We've had this with Change My Mind. When people talk about immigration, they go, what about, what about dreamers? You know, we, right. some people use the term yeah. anchor babies. Right. But yeah. what about the babies who, who, through no fault of their own, their parents migrated here illegally? Should they be? Yeah. You know what? You don't care about that. That's not where our opini opinions diverge. And that's why I don't believe in trying to find a middle ground. Because I, if we were to say, okay, how about this? Dreamers, all of the children of illegal immigrants, they can stay. Everyone else gets the boot. No, 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 no. Wait, wait. Well, hold on a second. Where do you believe yeah. we should draw the line? Do you believe in deporting violent felons who are here illegally and overcrowding our prison systems? Give them the vote and health care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like with abortion, right? They say, what about cases of rape and incest? You don't care about that. No. Why? Okay, if I were to say, all right, all rape and incest cases, abortion, no questions asked. Can we, no, 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 no. Well, hold on a second. Where do you draw the line? No right. Democrat, not one outside of Tulsi Gabbard, could give an answer outside of it's a woman's right to choose. And that's why we see policies, as you see in Virginia, that that basically occurs up until crowning. Gosh, yeah. gosh. Even so let's post. not act as though we diverge, that our opinions start, all of a sudden there's a gap right. be, once we arrive at rape and incest or once we arrive at the idea mm -hmm. of anchor babies. Yeah. You don't believe in deporting violent felons, period. And you don't believe that there should be any limitations on abortion, period, as a party, Democrats. So never, Trumpers, I ask you again, how do you lock arms with these people? Yeah. Go to the deficit. Here's where you might have a point, right? That Donald Trump hasn't balanced the budget. 
And I, you know what? I agree. I have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. I have a problem with the deficit. I think yep. it's inconsistent for people who were so upset with Barack Obama to give Donald Trump a free pass. Got it. That's a valid point. But neither did George W. Bush. Mm, yeah. What about George Bush Sr.? What about Ronald Reagan? And, and again, what's most important is you need to compare Donald Trump's transgressions with what you know would be policy coming from the left. Do we think that any of the current Democratic nominees would balance a budget more conservatively than Donald Trump? Take your pick. Bernie, Warren, butt gig, anyone? <laughs> butt gig, butt gig, <laughs> butt gig, anyone. <laughs> And this is the point I would make. President Trump, for all of his faults, he's governed more conservatively than arguably any president in modern history, despite the fact that he probably isn't as conservative personally as maybe uh, some some of the the previous Republican presidents. I don't know. I don't have any reason to believe that he's super liberal. I don't have any reason to believe that he's super conservative personally. But as far as the record here, it speaks for itself. And my point is, yes, again, 2016 conservatives were right to be a little bit suspicious of Donald Trump. And that was, again, part of his appeal. But that's not the case anymore. He's not an unknown entity. He's done more for conservative Christian Americans and the American economy, arguably, than any president in modern history. In 2020, I want to be really clear, never Trumpers, it's not a vote between the lesser of two evils, not even close. This is a choice between an imperfect president, as all presidents before him, who's governed at least as conservatively uh, as any Republican in recent memory, at least comparably conservatively. Mm -hmm. Okay, your choice is between that and a party of evil. It couldn't be more clear. It's not, oh, we're all Democrats now. You're all Democrats because you're principled. You are all Democrats now precisely because you are unprincipled. Mm. Precisely because your blind disdain for President Trump overrules all of the conservative principles that you claim to hold so dear. So Donald Trump said, grab him by the so I support Ralph Northam and his platform. Hey there, YouTube viewer, you know the drill. Just click one of these other videos in a box playing up here. And I mean, by, there's an actual box. I don't, of course, mean that in the feminine, it's a slur, but that, of course, I don't mean box because men can have boxes too. And I don't mean to say box. I just, that men can, there's like a DC outlet and an AC outlet, and they can be either one that they choose depending on the electrical current or the charge of ions, I think.